Hi, and welcome to the channel. I'm Cindy Daycheck with Queen Bee Creations. If you have been following us for a while, thank you for subscribing. If you're new to the channel, then I invite you to subscribe. Hit the notification button. We come at you every Friday with a new craft, a new project for you to be able to give, give a try. Today, we are gonna be taking this circular board and we're gonna turn it into a decorative footed tray. We're gonna have handles, we're gonna have screw on feet, we're gonna, we're gonna make it pretty. To start though, as with virtually everything, we need to start by painting it out. Uh, we need to get a base coat on. Now, we are gonna be doing some decoupage and we're gonna be doing it using, now you could use a decoupage paper of your choice. I'm gonna be using a paper napkin. If you are using any kind of a napkin or a tissue paper or a decoupage paper, it can get a little bit see-through. So you want to use a base color that works with your particular pattern. So if you see, I have a lot of cream in this so I don't want to necessarily do a stark white so I'm choosing crinoline which is a beautiful off-white color from DIY because it's going to serve as a good foundation it's going to echo up nicely through this if I did a black background then it would darken all of these creamy areas in ways that that may look okay but may not so I'm gonna keep it nice and light. I'm gonna start off with, um, get some of the, the gook off the top, but I'm just gonna start by painting it out with my crinoline color. And I'm going to do two coats, top and bottom, because it's going to be um, a nice footed tray. I want the bottom to as well have paint and be covered and not be the raw wood. So. I'm just gonna take care of getting this painted out and then I'll come back at you when we start on the next step. My circle is now painted, two coats, um, top and bottom. And again, you decide which becomes your bottom. Um, and I've lightly sanded it and dusted it off just to make it a little bit smoother. So I wasn't looking to distress I was just kind of sanding it to be able to get that top little, little rough texture of my paint off. Now, I am going to be putting handles on this, but they're not going to be substantial, so I'm not looking at that really bothering me when it comes to my, my design. This is, as you'll recall, the napkin that I was looking to decoupage. Now, the one thing about napkins is that you do want to separate the layers and your napkin will either be two or three ply. Um, no way to tell until you start taking it apart. So just kind of start with a corner and you have to kind of futz and I already started mine off camera because it takes me a while and you really don't want to have to watch that. <laughs> so mine it turns out is two ply. So I'm only looking at having to pull off that one layer. What it does mean is just if you don't do that, you are more likely to get lifting. And I said I have just two ply, but this is me double checking anyway. Okay, so I have, you know, you're gonna have napkins that either have a pattern in one square that repeats in all four squares, or this napkin actually has the pattern that runs all the way across two squares, so I get a lot of length out of it. Now, depending upon what napkin you, you choose and what patterning you have, you may want to cut around the outside of the pattern, or in my case, I am going to tear it. Because I am not going to be cutting around every one of these little flowers, I just want to have nice rough edges rather than a straight edge. It will end up actually looking um, okay and it will look better that way. So I'm gonna tear all the way across my design. 
And you could, so here's, here's a trick. You could take a toothpick, toothpick a um, cotton swab. <laughs> you could take a cotton swab and dip it in water and run it along the edge and then tear the wet edge. But then you have to wait until that dries before you decoupage it. And I'm not waiting. And ha, it's a three ply. So as I'm tearing it, look at, look at the difference here. So very gently, I am having to separate this. Okay. So much better. So one of the things that made it difficult to tell was this particular napkin is crimped um, all around all four edges. And it makes it a little bit more challenging. But if you go to cut or especially tear, you're gonna be able to see that you've got more plies that you're working with. Oh, awesome. Okay, that's also gonna make it a lot easier to tear. So perfect. So I just like kind of the uneven edges rather than a hard start or stop to the patterning. And what I'm gonna to have to do is because this doesn't reach all the way across the full length of my can see that I'd have to bring my pattern down this low so I can either take it down this low and maybe do it's just very rough and maybe kind of do it both sides so that my sharp edge my flat edge doesn't come across if I want to take it up higher which I'm thinking I do so I get more of my blooms, then I'm going to have to tear down these sides and I may want to then add on, right? So that I don't have this side just disappearing off into nothing. I think I have a repeat right about here. I'm just going to kind of tear this down and I think I can sort of lay that over top. And that's one of the nice things when you're working with really thin paper like this, that you've got the opportunity to be able to layer them on top. And so. To do this, nice and simple, you're gonna take your decoupage medium. Now you could use something like Mod Podge, which you can get from your local craft store um, or from Amazon, or I am using um, Liquid Patina, the crystal clear chandelier from DIY, which is an awesome decoupage medium. So what I'm going to start with is, as much as I'm gonna cover my, old, my whole board, ultimately, I'm just going to cover the area that I'm working with first so that I can make decisions about the rest of the board after. So you get your decoupage medium down because I'm working with really fine um, paper. I don't have to put a ton of it on and I want to make sure I get that bottom edge just overlapped a little bit and my straight edge over there so it's just a little off on the left hand side, there we go. And just laying it out. And I'm just kind of working a little bit of the wrinkles out. It really depends upon how much that bothers you or potentially how much distressing you're gonna do afterward. If you're gonna to want to distress this back afterward, dull it down a little bit, then the wrinkles actually add some, some cool texture that when you distress, it removes some of those layers right in that spot, which is awesome. So I want to layer this next little overlay piece 
over top here. So I'm gonna wet that section that I'm layering it over so that it will stick just fine. Now I'm gonna take this piece and try as best I might to match it up. And then coat the whole thing. And once it's all coated, you're gonna leave it to dry. Um, so however long that, that takes, I'm gonna be leaving mine overnight, just because it's kind of the end of my work day here. And I'll come back at it tomorrow. But let me lift this up because I'll do some on the other side too. But this gives you an idea. And if you're not looking for that fix, it's kind of hard to be able to see. So this is this is my tray. And what I want to do is decide whether or not I want to do the exact same thing across there, or if I just want to tear away a bunch of blooms and have some of the blooms sitting here and there-ish. Um, so that I just have some individual ones rather than kind of the, the full sheet of them going all the way across. So whether or not I just want to have a few sticking here and there up the sides and maybe a little along the bottom, which sounds like a plan. So let's get this guy on there. And so I'm just going to continue futzing with this a little bit and getting some of these on. And then uh, I'll be coming back at you tomorrow. And we can finish off the tray. So one of the things that I will do is seal the top entirely. Um, and then Tomorrow we'll come back and we'll finish. We've got to do the sides, we've got to do the bottom, and then we've got handles and feet that we're going to add to so that this is a little bit um, more than just simply a, a flat tray. We're going to want to decorate it up a little bit more and uh, have a little bit more interest happening. So I'll see you tomorrow. This has had an opportunity to dry overnight and that means it's the next day and I got a helper in the shop. So this is one of my grandsons, Charlie, who is going to be hanging with me for the day and we've got all kinds of work lined up for him, but he wanted to give a little bit of a hand on this and he's going to be helping me with some of the other boards later today too. So. What I do want to do before I carry on with anything else is I do want to base coat. I want to seal the bottom of this item, but I want to get all of the little fuzzy parts off the side from the decoupaging. So all I'm going to be doing is taking my sanding block and running it down against the overhang right on that lip. And that serves to just kind of cut and trim away all those excess little pieces of the decoupage paper without having to really futz about anything. And then as soon as that's done, I'm gonna flip this over, I'm gonna use my liquid patina, same brush, and seal this. So I'll come back at you once this is all dry so that we can do the next step then. So we've got another couple of steps to go. Because this is dry on the bottom, it makes sense that we now can add our feet before we flip over to the top again. Um, so to do that, I actually have some little rubber feet and they have a hole in the center so that we can screw down into it and the, the screw will be countersunk. So only the rubber is gonna to be touching the table or whatever surface you put this on. So I really like these feet. I will drop a link down below so that you can check them out. I get them through Amazon, but it's just um, a nice, nice secure foot and way better than just gluing something on. So Charlie, my darling, you get to try screwing this in. Okay. So. 
It's got the right bit. I can hold the foot for you if you want to screw it down in. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So now we can work on the top of our piece. And for this, I had to sand well. All I want to do is I want to sand this lightly. Now you could just attach your handles as it is, but I just want to just kind of smooth this out a little bit. And what it's going to do is it's going to dull down the color of your napkin a little bit. So let me do part of it and let's see what I'm talking about. All right. So if you can see, the bright and then slightly dulled down. I'm gonna antique this a little bit after. So that's why I'm going for a little bit, a little bit of a softer look. Because I've done that, what I will need to do is I will need to reseal this piece. So as soon as I finish doing my sanding and I dust it, I'll take my liquid patina, coat it one more time, and once that's dry, we'll come back and we'll attach the hardware. The final step in the process is to take a look at what handles you have on hand and which ones you want to attach onto the top so that you're able to lift the tray um, readily without having to do it from the bottom. You could not put handles on and because it's raised, it lifts up fairly easily because you've got those, those rubber feet on the bottom. I've decided to go with kind of like a brushed, um, brushed bronzy kind of brassy color. It seems to work well with kind of this golden yellow sort of overall look. And um, as you saw with, with Charlie, easiest to uh, kind of punch a bit of a hole in first and then be able to put your screws in. Now you can measure this out. I've just kind of eyeballed it because that's what I do. Um, but you can measure this out to decide where you are. I'm using cup pulls, which enable you to still kind of slip your fingers in under it, but you can use a raised handle. You're just looking for something that makes it easy to be able to grab and, and to be able to lift up. So again, a step that you could do, a step you could skip. Um, but again, it makes a super cute, really pretty easy um, little tray. I've sealed it that it's going to be fine for using just kind of on a tabletop for decor if you want with, uh, you know, creating a little bit of a vignette. You could certainly put, um, use it as a functional item, carrying glasses and condiments and all kinds of things um, out. If you are looking at wanting to use it for food items that are going to be in contact with the board, then I would probably, as much as I feel comfortable um, with the DIY products, you may want to go with, with a sealer that is rated food grade. Um, you know, personal preference there. So if you're going to put cheeses or something damp. Overall, because we have done this with a decoupage item, we are not... Well, I'm going to say not putting in the dishwasher, but it's wood. You wouldn't put it in the dishwasher anyway, or you shouldn't. Um, but you're just going to take a damp cloth to be able to wipe it off. And uh, certainly if you wanted it to be even um, more sealed, you could use a marine grade sealer if you wanted and needed to. For my purposes, certainly the DIY product was more than sufficient. So I'm going to finish attaching on the handle and then I am done with this. I'll snap some pics and show you some close-ups. Hope you give this a try. You can use this same technique on virtually anything. So even if you um, don't have access to a round board, I mean, you can, you can uh, find these sometimes with round cutting boards, certainly taking an oblong cutting board, the same idea, adding on some feet. I love those rubber feet. You can get them from the link other paints and supplies available on queenbeecreationshome.com and I look forward to seeing you next week. Take care.